I think uh, the interest in flying goes way back to when I was a, a child and we lived in 1734 Heath Avenue in Madison, which was about a mile and a half from the airport. And the reason we moved to Madison is so my father could work on the field there, which was called Truex Field at that time, now known as the Dane County Regional Airport. And they were filling in the marsh. Uh, they were moving the airport from the south side of Madison uh, in the general area of where South Town is now, Madison, and it run down across uh, the by the where the bypass is down into the field towards the lake. And uh, that was just a sod field, uh, no pavement, they had lights. And so they ended up moving that airport over to what was being built. And after they had gotten it built during World War II, uh, in the early uh, 40s, uh, we had bombers and a, a group of uh, flyers that military flyers that flew out of there. I can recall sometimes the flight path brought the airplanes right over our house. And you'd glance up there and you'd see them and wonder where that airplane is going to go. And of course, Truex Field at that time was low. It was lower than the hills that we were lived on. And so these, when they, by the time the planes got over us, they hadn't gained a lot in altitude, and so they come roaring over. You would wonder where they're headed for, and what they're going to do, and how it'd feel like to be up there and looking down, and, and so on. And uh, it was a number of years after that. Uh, we had uh, moved to Oregon in '46. By that time, I was only 12 years old. But by the time I graduated from high school in 52, uh, I had a uh, old car that my father let us get a hold of and, and repair. And so I had become interested in certain repairs. And, and most of these cars were of the Chrysler brand, and although not all of them were. And so we become known at the uh, Chrysler the dealer in Oregon, um, a guy by the name of Tester Lee, owned and run it. And uh, I was uh, repairing, I can recall repairing the brakes on a car once down there. And of course we'd buy parts from them and use some of their tools and bring some of our own tools in and work along with their mechanics. And at the end of that one day, he had been helping me himself and he says, what are you doing tonight? And, and I had to be between 17 and 18 at that time. Maybe I had just even lost my mom. I'm not certain. And I said, um, well, I don't have anything special in mind. And he says, well, I'm going to head down to Monroe and, and uh, I'm going to do a little flying. He says, uh, just keep proficient. And I've got tanks on the plane right now and I'd like you to, if you'd want, you can come along with me and I'll just take the tanks off and and we can do a little flying. Because what he had done is he had tanks on to uh, do some spray spraying of uh, farmers' fields. And uh, it was a little Piper Cub that didn't have enough power to pull the two of us and the tanks up too. And, and I suppose I I probably weighed in the area of 165, 70 pounds, not real large. And he was a little larger, taller man than I. And so that was my first airplane ride that I can recall. Uh, never rode a passenger jet or anything because they didn't have jets. And, uh, and so that would have been like in 1950, 51. And, uh, then when I was in service, I joined service in 55, uh, we went overseas in a ship. And there was uh, troop transports that did fly the uh, brass and stuff back and forth, but uh, regular troops like I was, uh, 
we took uh, seven days on a ship and went uh, from Fort Hamilton to uh, Bremerhaven and by train down to uh, Kitzigan, Germany. And we've had by train, we went from Fort Riley to Fort Hamilton as well. But uh, once I got to Germany and uh, was able to have more time to ourselves on the weekends, one of my favorite things was to go up on the hill where they had the airport and uh, these guys that were flying these observer airplanes would be practicing and they were just a little brown Piper Cub that uh, would fly around the pattern and all I could do was sit there and watch them. And some of the next um, times of flying for me, it was when I was a first sergeant in the Army and I was able to requisition the helicopters up at uh, Fort Camp McCoy after I got back from uh, Germany. And uh, after I got flying at Camp McCoy, this is in the middle 60s, I decided that it was probably time in my life that I'd like to be able to do some flying on my own. Of course, Carol didn't want me to fly because we didn't have any money. Didn't have the time, didn't have the training, and it was dangerous. So by the time the end of the 60s came around, uh, uh, we had some good years in the business, so I did have the money, and I made arrangements so I have the time, and I got my ground school out of the way, and I called up to the airport, and and uh, Madison Air Guide Club had a special training going up there that they could, I could join them and join their club and fly their plane. So uh, I started taking uh, ground lessons and then started into my flight lessons uh, at Four Lakes at the Madison Air Guard Club, which um, I flew a Cessna. 172. And I don't think I was even through my training and had an opportunity for us to buy a 150, Cessna 150 for the business so that we could be indirectly business playing them. And uh, that led on to trading that for a 172, a new one in 1974. They only had a few hours on it. I, I don't recall how many hours we had on it, but it seems to me you know, 30 or 40 hours. We got it during the winter months and stored it at the hangar that we had in Brooklyn. And I had to uh, release that in 1984, 10 years we had it. 1983, maybe the summer of 83, we probably had to get rid of it. And, uh, and so I didn't fly from 83 until 11 years later, and I met the Civil Air Patrol here in Waukesha and got back into flying, and since that time I've been putting on 50 or more hours a year, which is uh, fairly decent, and hopefully I can continue to do 